What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Simmons Comics, and we are here to talk about San Diego Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con Day One. We all know San Diego Comic Con's a little bit different this year. They're having Comic Con at home, but it seemed to be a great day for number one with a few hiccups. That's right. So we are going to be your San Diego Comic-Con correspondents this year. We may not be live at the ground in San Diego Comic-Con, but we are live on our couch for the virtual San Diego Comic-Con, bringing you all of that information. It was a fun day. A few hiccups, like you mentioned. Definitely some content blocking going on on the YouTube server from some content providers that had to be adjusted. Um, some hiccups. Definitely us East Coasters had to adjust to the whole schedule being West Coast time. But other than that, Definitely a fun day and a good warm up for the rest of the weekend. And the first thing of note that we know we wanted to bring to the Simple Men's Comics YouTube family was a panel from IDW about Snake Eyes. It was with Rob Liefeld. He was talking about his brand new Snake Eyes Dead Game uh, miniseries and the success in sales of issue number one. And one of the things that he was highlighting was the brand new created characters that he's going to be bringing into the series and his longtime fandom of G.I. Joe and hopes that one day these new characters will become G.I. Joe action figures. We all know about that Snake Eyes Dead game. It definitely sold up well at New Comic Day, and it also sold well with the IDW on that San Diego Comic-Con exclusive as well, right? That's right. But there was also a couple panels on that. They're talking about Marvel 616. That's a new docuseries that's coming on Disney+. Plus. That's right. And this is one of the things that I'm real bullish on is a docuseries. We've seen them in the sports card market. They've really affected sports card sales and i think we could see some of that trickle into comics um now this one isn't directed at any one thing and i don't know that it'll have an effect on the comic market but it's good for the comic market in the whole because it's going to get a lot of exposure on marvel and the 616 and the whole universe it's directed by communities jillian jacobs as well as the league's paul Shear, and it's going to debut on disney plus network and we got a chance to see the very first clip from the upcoming series yeah, I also saw something on there where like at least one of those issues is going to be solely on women in comics, which I think is a great topic. Then we also got news about New Mutants. We've also heard rumors recently that, hey, it might show up on Disney+, Plus, but they also had the panel, and they're still hopeful for a theatrical release, right? That's right. There were rumors rampant hitting Twitter just before, and I'm talking about minutes before that New Mutants panel was about to kick off for San Diego Comic-Con at home. And the talk was September 4th on Disney+. Plus. As soon as the uh, trailer began rolling, and I gotta say, they did a great job. It was really funny. The trailer starts rolling with the original release date crossed out, and then they put the next release date crossed out. The next release date crossed out all the way to the new one of August 28th, 2020. And then in parentheses, it says, fingers crossed. Um, they showed a whole bunch of tweets on screen making fun of the situation every actor talked about it on their panel um, you definitely got the feeling that the uh director josh boone as well as the cast really wants to get this movie in front of the public so in august 28th theatrical release um we'll see if it's if the uh the conditions are going to hold up and allow for that to happen if not we may be pushing closer and closer to a video on demand release similar to what we saw today from the announcement for bill and ted in the future installment getting a co theatrical and video on demand release on september 1st so yeah hopeful for that theatrical release but also be interested to see if it brings any heat to new mutants issue number one 14 and 18 because we've seen how those did with that movie had before, it's kind of died down, but I think once it hits, we're going to see some attention again. Yeah, it could be reignited. Yep. But we also talked about that Rob Liefeld panel. We also see news that there's this kick-ass documentary coming to Sci-Fi about the Todd father himself, right? That's right. Now, look, I'm not the biggest Sci-Fi fan, and they certainly don't have the biggest viewing audience, but it's not about where uh, a docu-series or a documentary releases. It is about where it lands on streaming. The Last Dance killed it on ESPN, but it is currently killing it on Netflix. And we talked about the effect that the um, docu-series and documentaries have had on the sports card market and the fact that we may see some of that start to trickle down into the comic market that we love. The trailer for this documentary is kick-ass. It, it is a little different than a lot of the past 
Todd McFarlane documentaries, which have all covered kind of his rise to prominence um, starting of Image Comics. But this follows his financial downfall into bankruptcy, as well as his rebounding by doubling down on the things that have worked for him, his toy creation, as well as Spawn, and the lead up for the record-breaking uh, Spawn 300. I really think this could get a lot of attention on some of the keys that they're going to focus in on for this documentary, which seem to be Spider-Man number one, Spawn number one, and Spawn 300. I also wonder if it's going to cover his Mark McGuire home run ball. It, it, they definitely mentioned it in, in the trailer, so I think that they will talk about that. So be on the lookout for that July 25th from Sci-Fi, um, as well as, I imagine, hitting streaming platforms at some point. But also, we got new news. We also would know that Amazon's got the boys that season two is about to hit. They've already announced that season three has been greenlit, right? That's right. So grab those issues number one, three, and seven because the boys isn't going anywhere. Now, not only has season three been greenlit ahead of season two, which lets you know how fire season two is about to be, but also we know that they are going to begin filming this immediately. And this is why the boys was able to jump Umbrella Academy because they went from season one to season two much faster than Umbrella Academy did. And now they're saying they're going to drop season three in the beginning part of 2021, barring conditions. And that yeah. could really change the game. Not only that, but they're also going the whole Talking Dead style, right? And they're going to have a comp like a companion show that follows each episode of season two. That's right. Starring and hosted by Alicia Tyler. Um, and I definitely think that that is something that will elevate the program in general. They kind of rounding out day one, they had an image panel, right? That had some pretty key Donny Cates news. That's right. This panel was titled Image Spotlight, and it was very vague. The description said that it featured a uh, powerhouse creative team returning for a new project. We found out that is the former God Country creative team of Jeff Shaw and Donny Cates returning for a brand new title titled Crossover. Now, we have seen the crossover image on Donny Cates' social media and led everybody to falsely believe that they were about to see some image Marvel um, DC crossover. We saw the conspiracy theories um, from those on social media with the three dots. Um, but nonetheless, instead, we're just getting what sounds to be a really kick-ass creator-owned series that is flipping the world of superheroes on its head. A portal opens up. All of these superheroes converge. Being a superhero is a virus, um, and it is essentially a crossover of all of these various characters all at once and the people that have to deal with it uh, sounds intense. Donnie Cates is claiming, and again, you got to take it with a, a grain of salt because he's the best salesman in comics that it is the most epic thing that he has ever done in comics. Um, but either way, a new Donnie Cates creator owned series coming from Image Comics sure to get everyone's attention. And it's on the way soon, Brian. It releases in October. Yeah, you could have said... You could take all the solicit, all the information about the book away. As soon as you said the creative team was Donny Cates and Jeff Shaw, I'm on it because it's one of my – I love seeing that creative team work together. I think Donny Cates writing with Jeff Shaw's work, artwork on that is always fantastic. Between Guy Country, we saw it in um, Cosmic Ghost Rider with Guardians of the Galaxy. But great work there and excited to pick that up in October. But that kind of rounds out day one of San Diego Comic-Con, right? That's right, action-packed day one, but stay tuned because we are going to be bringing you daily updates from San Diego Comic-Con. That's right, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, letting you know all of the news of the day, what we see happening and what we see happening to the comic market because of it. That's right, this is Brian Jack with Simmons Comics, and we will catch you in day two of the San Diego Comic-Con recap.